So many of you ask me that can you explain about the difference between Western astrology and Vedic astrology in a, in a um, visual form. Are you able to do that? Uh, because you know, I guess a lot of you do really want to know what is it, what's the argument that is happening all over the world, all over the internet that okay, this astrology is better than the other, you know, and then it becomes an egoistic game. I don't want to make it an egoistic game, I don't I want to make it a scientific, mathematical, and logical um, game and argument, okay? You know, it's like people saying the earth is flat, some are saying earth is round, and they get into their ego until it is proven. So I just want to prove it to you in a mathematical way on how is it that true calculations of planets and their positions are calculated in astrology um, in real Vedic astrology compared to your regular you know, mainstream astrology that you all have come to know. And remember, what I'm talking about here today is not going to be there 70,000 years from now. Because 70,000 years from now, or maybe I think now, probably 65,000 years from now, on November 7th, you're not going to be a Libra. You're actually going to be a Virgo. So remember, Vedic astrologies and mathematical calculations are actually moving with the movement of the planets. Okay? So, every 70,000 years, the sun will be in one less sign. So if you think you're Scorpio on November 5th, ha ah, yeah, wait, wait till, you know, 70,000 comes, 70,000 years passes, that's when you're going to be not just uh, Libra, but you're actually going to be a Virgo. And that's how the personality is trained, it's going to be different. But, but, Remember, each month has its own personality too. So November-born people will have a certain set of traits and personality versus the one born in October. However, the zodiac will have a big impact on how their true nature um, is inside. Okay? Now, many of you still want to argue that um, what if there is uh, no stars out there? What if all the stars burn out? Then what are you going to do with your Scorpion Libra sign? Look, it does not matter, it does not matter if the stars are there or not. When the fir astrologers first picked the sign of Aries, Libra, Scorpio, and they made this little scorpion out of the thing, it was just to show them that this sector of the sky represents a personality of somebody who has a traits of Scorpio. That's it. If, they, if the sky was completely empty, and somehow they were able to detect that this is that same portion that people are born into and that we're studying and seeing that everybody has this uh, personality of a scorpion personality, uh, okay, they'll, they won't need the stars, they'll be able to detect that. They just use the stars as a map, that's it. That okay, whoever's born in this 30 degrees of a sector, okay, is a scorpio. This 30 degree is a Sagittarius, this 30 degree is a Capricorn, that's all they did. So it doesn't matter. Do you know when it only matters when astrology will fail and can fail is when a planet is to blow up. If let's say Mercury blows up, okay, and there's no Mercury in, in no more in the sky, only then you have a problem. And that too, in the Vedas it says, not in the Vedas, I'm sorry, in our culture it says, and I've heard it, that uh, in 25 to 30 millennia, we may not even need astrology because either we will not be on this planet there won't be any more life on this planet or we will we will be so spiritually inclined and so spiritually stimulated that we may not need to worry about planets and flowing us only right now only in this past 10,000 to the next 100,000 years do we just need astrology and that's it Okay, so here we go regarding the true rotation of the stars and the difference between Vedic astrology and regular astrology. Okay, so here we go. Now, as you can see, this is the Earth, if you do not know. <laughs> okay, and this is the North Pole, that's the South Pole. Okay, now, when you are somewhere here in this country, you know, whether you're in Texas or California, you can be anywhere in the world. When you're looking at the sky, you know, you see all these stars in the sky. 
the way you're looking at it is in this direction okay this is called the, the, this is called the celestial equator okay this is the movement of the stars that you see from planet earth so stars move this way okay now the, even though we are seeing this way people in the greek world when they judged the you know the signs that the planets were in and the way they were rotating they judged that movement from this point of view the celestial equator while the solar system okay mathematically and scientifically the solar system is tilted so solar system is actually moving in this direction so the planets are moving like this if you're actually in the space and you're actually looking at the movement of the planets okay now this movement is called the ecliptic equator you guys taking notes good so this is called the ecliptic equator now you see the difference between this the celestial equator and the ecliptic equator is 23 degrees this is why there's a 23 degree difference between your Vedic astrology planets and signs and your Western astrology planets and signs and now you see how misleading this rotation is compared to the true rotation of the solar system and the planets because remember solar system is not straight it's also tilted now if earth was not tilted okay the tilt of the earth okay if the earth was not tilted then yes we will see this rotation from from the space as well if you were standing right on the edges of the earth but since the earth is tilted and the solar system is tilted this becomes the true degree of the planets 23 degrees off so that means if you're here and you're looking at the sky you're looking at Jupiter in the sign of Capricorn okay at 10 degrees Capricorn I'm sorry Jupiter is actually in 13 degrees Sagittarius not Capricorn so I hope this part helped now we're gonna move to another map of the sky okay now in this diagram I'm going to show you what it means by uh, ascendant, descendant, and how the actual uh, rotation of the sun happens. Okay? Now, in this chart, as you see, there's your celestial equator. This is how you see the sun move when you're on Earth standing, you know, whether you're in California or Egypt or Australia. This is how you see the sun moving. In actuality, the sun is moving like this. Okay? Sun is moving like this. Now, you see these terms, Imam Kuli and Medium Kuli. Imam Kuli is the lowest point of the sun. This is where sun is at around 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., okay, around that time. This, Medium Kuli, is the north point of the sun, where you see the, like, oh, it's 12 p.m. now, 12, 1, 2, kind of like the highest point of the sun, okay? Now, the ascendant is the east, okay so the eastern side will always be ascendant and the west side is always be descendant okay so let's say the Sun is right now at 12 a.m. okay it's an Imam Kuli location and let's say it's in the sign of Capricorn okay but a person is born at this time at 12 a.m. while the Sun is in Capricorn now his ascendant is not Capricorn because let's say on the east side, not the south, east side, um, let's say Scorpio was rising at this point. Not this portion that where the sun is, is Capricorn. And let's say this side, Scorpio was rising and the person is born. So the east direction when the person is born, this becomes your ascendant. This is what actually is the most important part in astrology. This is what sets your personality. Your entire life is mapped okay so if let's say this is your ascendant the first house in astrology and this is a Scorpio okay Sun 
is in Capricorn, which might be your third house. Okay, so this is ascendant. This is always be ascendant. So just because a person is born at 12 a.m., you cannot say his ascendant is Capricorn because the sun is there. No, but the east side will always be east side, and the ascendant is only always the eastern direction. So whatever sign is rising, whether it's 2 a.m. or 2 p.m., whatever sign is rising on this side of the planet, that is what your ascendant is. Now, what is the descendant? Descendant is your seventh house. It's the complete opposite. So if you are, uh, if so, a person is born at 12 a.m. with a Scorpio rising, he will have Taurus as his descendant, the seventh house. Now, how does the sun move? Sun moves in this direction, like this. So right now, sun is in Capricorn. Pop, 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 pop. Sun comes at 6 a.m. or 5:45 a.m. and the ascendant. So when you wake up at and, and you go outside, you see the sun rising in the east side where it comes at the ascendant so the sun is in the first house so if you're born at this time your sun might be in the first house and your rising sign will be the same as well okay so then the sun moves pop, 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 oh it comes to the most highest point the most hottest point the 12 p a uh, p a p m time and then it moves back down 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 so now it starts to get well you know dimmer and dimmer and dimmer so at this point it's already down and it's now going to its lowest power point from where you're standing. So in California, sun is at its lowest point in Imam Kuli. Now in India, which is on the other side, yeah, the sun was probably going to be at the ascendant rising. So you see how these celestial rotations work in actuality versus what you have been taught to know in the West of uh, when it comes to astrology. I mean, I'm showing you the actual mathematical way, you know. I'm showing you how the sun is moving. Sun is sun is actually moving this way. Even though we see sun is going this way, this way, this way, it's actually going in this direction. And the if you look at it from a mathematical and scientific view. Okay, so I hope this helped. Please subscribe, which is at the top, and check out my website below, which is my astrology book and my astrology website which you know will give you more sense of who you are thank you